Good afternoon, good people. Quick video for you today. Today I'm looking at the IEMA T9 integrated amplifier. This is a, well, we'll talk about it. It says that it's a 100 watt amplifier. It is class D with two generic hybrid tubes. Well, two generic tubes uh, that honestly sounds great, but it has some issues. Now here are my issues. First, there's no way that this thing plays into eight ohms above 15 watts. I listened to these 87 dB speakers from about two to three meters away, and I couldn't get this maxed out to play louder than 75 dB into those speakers. Take it for what it's worth. Another thing, it sounds great with two of its inputs. The RCA and the optical, not only do they sound great, they work great. The Bluetooth, it's Bluetooth, take it or leave it. The coaxial, I tried several times to get it to work playing the Blue Sound node via coaxial into this, and I got popping every single time I used it. Not all the time, granted, but enough to make it so it distracted from the music and it was annoying. PC, I used my AudioQuest Cinnamon USB-C to USB cable to play PC. And yeah, it says that it's $24.96, but it sounded thin. Uh, so if I were to rank these in order of what I preferred, I preferred optical first, I preferred RCA second, I preferred Bluetooth third, then PC USB, and then I would never use coaxial because I think that it could damage my speakers. It's unfortunate, but that's the reality. These binding posts uh, work from with banana plugs, with bare wire, spades, um, and like I said, this can play four ohm speakers. I didn't use four ohm speakers into this. The only speakers I used were my CSS Crichton 1TDXs, and I used a pair of Wharfdale Diamond 225s, and it sounds shockingly good with its best inputs. The auxiliary out I used to try to play with my uh, subwoofer. Um, it made the bass sound thin, so I continued to use the subwoofer output on my node uh, to make the sound full. So I went through some of the things that annoy me. Uh, what works? I like the VU meter. It doesn't measure anything accurately, but it lights up a bright orange. It looks great. I like the form factor. This is a solid metal casing that honestly feels a lot heavier than it actually is. Um, I also like that it's it's a fairly intuitive design. Um, push in to uh, turn it on, then you, uh, after it's on, you push to switch between the inputs. The volume has no indicator, so you don't really know exactly where you're at on the volume wheel, but there are clicks. Um, so you know kind of how much you're raising and lowering it. And then you have tone controls. Woohoo! There's a remote. It's worthless. Um, don't use it. Um, other things that you should know about this that... Uh, other things you should know about it? It sounds great. Uh, my concerns. There's stuff on it that doesn't work right now. Um, like the coaxial. And that's concerning to me because... I don't know that this is a long-term product. I'm actually gonna keep it. I'm gonna put it in my kid's room uh, with the Wharfdale Diamond 225 bookshelf speakers. Um, but I don't think that, I would not trust that this is going to work for the long-term. Uh, I've heard some people talk about trash technology in hi-fi, um, how there's this hi-fi that it's made and it's only gonna work for a little while before you throw it in the trash. And I question whether this is actually one of those. I think there's a good chance that the resale value on this is gonna be poor. Um, I think that if you were to go on eBay and see how much these have sold for recently, uh, right now, because there's some hype around it, you might get like 60 bucks for it. But I think in a few years, this is 
either going to break or you're going to want to upgrade. Um, and I think that when it breaks, it ends up in the trash. And when you upgrade, I don't think you're going to be able to sell it. And you're going to either donate it to Goodwill, which is fine, or you're going to throw it in the trash. Uh, I have come to realize that in hi-fi especially, if you are, if you know what you want, wait for the product that you want. I wanted the Croft Phono integrated. I waited until it was available, and I think it's going to last for a really, really long time. And even when it breaks, it's going to be a fairly straightforward process to get it fixed. Um, this, it's going to cost more than you actually paid for. I paid $88 for this. I would imagine that uh, I'd probably have to pay at least 50 bucks to repair anything in here that would break. So just be wary of that. Um, worry about where be wary about that trash hi-fi the stuff that you know is just a holdover until something else and you're not going to be able to get much for it or you might have to donate it afterwards or worse yet put it in the trash um i'd save up if i was in the market for this i would honestly save up for well dreaming big i'd save up for an outlet or an open box of the cambridge axa 61 that you can get right now on Music Direct for like $520. Um, or I would get some of the clearance, like the Sony DH-190 would be a great option to have instead of this. Because um, I think those are more likely to last for a lot longer than this will last. Um, but if you know that this is what you want, get it. It's gonna sound great, it's gonna work for a while. Um, and like I said, you'll be shocked by the sound quality that you have out of this. So, that's all I got to say. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions or comments, leave them down below or email me. Um, I appreciate you watching and again, enjoy the music. Have a great day.